somebody got saved. When did he become a follower of Christ? Uh, you mean he got saved? Amen. Uh, there's some people followed Paul around one time, the demon possessed. Uh, he, I'm glad I got saved. I'm glad I got saved. I'm glad I got saved, y'all. I got saved, and I know what it means to be saved. Don't deserve it. I don't deserve it then, don't deserve it now, never will. But I got saved. Hallelujah. And the world ain't never figured that out yet. They ain't never been able to control God's people. They've tried. And what's about them martyrs tonight? Every time they'd kill one, two would pop up. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, hallelujah. Boy, it's good to have all of you that are visiting with us this morning. Hello. Uh, uh, these these guys from uh, Chris, them, where you at? Opal and Chris, back there. They've been snowboarding, skiing up in West Virginia all week. One of them ain't broke all their legs. They could have done it in our house for free this week. And uh, sure is good to see Brother Ernie. Good to see Brother Ernie with us this morning. Miss Sue and Mac and Sandy. I, Brother Ernie's been a real friend to me, and I love him this morning. All right, here we go. Take your Bible, turn to two places. Acts chapter 16 and 2 Timothy chapter 1. Quickly. Please, turn quickly this morning, and uh, I want to show you something in the Bible. Acts chapter 16 uh, and then 2 Timothy chapter number 1. I need you to uh, stay with me for a few minutes this morning to get the thought of this message. It's going to be a little bit different than what I normally do. I want you to hear me out. This thought's been on my heart for some time, and I'm going to try to bring it out right. So you help me and, and pay attention. Uh, Acts 16, uh, we're going to read about a young man named Timothy Amen. who was a, a young preacher Paul's son in the faith, and Paul had a lot of confidence in this boy. There's, I think there's only four men in the Bible that had two books named after them. Timothy, Samuel, Peter, and John, I think. Is that right? I don't know if anybody else had two books in the Bible named after him. So this young man, Timothy, he was a, he was a very, very important character in that early church. But I want to show you something about him this morning and help, maybe help you with it. Look at Acts 16, 1. Then came he to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus. That's him. The son of a certain woman. So he had a mama, 
We're going to read about her in the other scripture, which was a Jewess and believed. So his mom was a good Christian woman, but his father was a Greek. Now, he was well reported of in verse 2, and Paul wanted to take him with him in verse 3 and took him and circumcised him because of the Jews that were there in those quarters. He didn't have to be, but he did it for the Jews. For they all knew that his father was a Greek. Now, look at 2 Timothy 1 uh, and verse number 5. When I call to remembrance, this is Paul writing to that same boy, Timothy, the unfeigned faith that is in thee. He said, Timothy, you got a lot of faith. Where'd he get it? Which dwelt first in his grandmother, Lois, and in his mother, Eunice. He never mentioned his daddy. His daddy was a Greek. And I'm persuaded that in thee also. Now, I'm going to talk more about him in just a minute, but we're not told anywhere that Timothy's daddy was even saved. Might have been. But the indication is that he was not. And Timothy got his faith from his mother, Eunice. She got him her mother, Lois, passed down through. I want to preach this morning. Here's my subject. Fight it or feed it. Fight it or feed. I want to say this for a long time, but honestly, I didn't realize some of the things I'm going to say until just the last few years. Like Mom said, by the time you learn how to live, it's time to die. Ain't that right? That's awful, isn't it? Now, I'm going to ask you a question this morning. Who are you? What are you? Here you are sitting in this building here in 2018 on the side interstate and near Morgan in North Carolina in a building called Shining Light Baptist Church, the people, that the building that we meet in is walls around us. Who are you? Who are you? I tell you who you are. You are a combination of your dad and your mom and then you as an individual in the mix somewhere. You are also a product of the, your family, your neighborhood that you grew up in, your peers, teachers, coaches, instructors, people you went on trips with, everybody that you've had contact with in your life, and then the movies that you watched growing up, the music you listened to coming up, and then the influence of the devil and God. That's who you are here this morning. You're a mess. I'll talk more about that in a minute. But sometimes you wonder, you hear all this stuff nowadays, people say, well, uh, I was born this way, I was born that. The truth is, you got a lot of your mama in you, you got a lot of your daddy in you, and then you got some of you in you, your own self, and then you got influences, good and bad, coming from all kinds of different places. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever, have you ever said something or did something and just stopped and thought, that's my mama coming? How many's ever done that? Raise your hand. Or you say you 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 catch yourself saying something, doing something, and you you can hear that's your daddy. He comes out in you. I mean, it happens all the time. I know people say, "Oh, I don't believe that." You're an individual. You're a blank sheet of paper, and whatever you put in your life, that's I, I don't. That's not true. You have traits. You have tendencies. You have strengths and weaknesses from your parents, mother, and dad. You don't believe it. You say, I don't believe that. You say, uh, preacher, I don't believe. I believe everything you've got, you develop on your own. No, no, no. Now, I don't believe in generational curse. As long, the generational curse ain't in the Bible. But there is tendencies that people pass down to their kids and down to their kids and down there. Now, you say, I don't believe that. Let me, let me prove it to you. Look at yourself physically. Physically. Ain't you a product of your mom and dad? I Sometimes people say, people say, uh, uh, I, I, like, I know Jimmy a long time before I know his mom. And uh, he come here to church two or three years. And I remember the first time he came, I said, there's Jimmy. I mean, we, we, get, we get physical traits. Me, right now, physically, I'm about the same size physically of my daddy. My daddy had, had, he, my daddy had real strong arms and fists to be such a small man. But he was a small man. But he's always real skinny. I have a fat neck, and if I eat a lot, my, that's where I, sure, my neck is bigger than proportionately than it should be, and that comes from my mom. 
My mom's side of the family have big neck. You say, now, if we get them, I'm not very, I'm the same height as my dad. There are exceptions. There are exceptions. But most of the time, you get a lot of your physical traits. The, the, the shape of your nose. Boy, I know where she got that nose. Look at her daddy. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, stuff like that. And, and the height. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, my, my, I, I, they say that uh, the biggest part of the world have brown eyes. The big majority of the world have brown or really, really dark eyes. Then there's a few different colors, blue, like, I don't know, 20% or something like that. Gr- green, like mine or yellow or whatever color they are, depending on what, where, which way the sun is shining, uh, uh, I, is only 3% of the population of the world have green eyes. Mine comes from my mom. Hers is blue, green, bluish green. Come to her side of the family. You can't help that. You can't help it. My height, you can't help it. Now, you can't tell me. You can't tell me that if you get your height, your strength, your physical size, your nose, your eyes, your hair from your parents, you can't tell me some of their good and bad qualities ain't in you too. They are. They are. I ain't trying to sound like a psychiatrist this morning, but that's in the Bible. That's in the Bible. Those giants, their sons was tall. I couldn't. The other day, I had to get Anthony and Tyler to come up here and hold that, put that thing up there because I couldn't reach that. I couldn't reach it, and they can because they're taller. They can do something I can't do, but I can write that, and they can't. I'd hate to see it if they did it. See, I can do something they can't do. They can do something I can't do. Am I right? Say amen. amen. Now, what I've got to learn how to do, and here's my whole message this morning. Here's what you've got to learn how to do. You've got to take your strengths and feed them and then starve that bad part that you get from your parents and the world. Fight it. You have bad tendencies coming from your parents into you, and you've got to fight that. Timothy's daddy was a Greek. But his mom was a Holy Ghost-filled old shouting woman, probably. And Timothy went the right way. I'll guarantee you Timothy had tendencies from his daddy. That he now, so you got a lot of your mama in you, and you got a lot of your daddy in you. And what you got to do, you got to think, now I get that good part from daddy, feed that. Or I get that bad part from daddy, starve that. Or I get that good part from mom, you got to fight your flesh. Your temper, your IQ. Um, how many? How many seen your kids do something that's just like his daddy? That's his. Uh, she's her mama. I mean, I mean, we all do that. It's a, now this message deals with this, and I want you to listen. You got to ignore them bad things. If you don't, you're 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 going to turn out just like him or just like her. I mean, you've all you've all heard me say this. I've all you've the, the old saying is like father, like son. The Bible said, uh, as is the mother, so is her daughter. That's what it says. And I've always believed this and preached this. A man will turn out just like his daddy or worse unless God does something for him. A woman will, for, as a general rule, will turn out just like her mom or worse unless God does something for him. My dad was an alcoholic for years. I've never drank in my life. Never. I, but, I, you know, it scared me. And I thought, that's a bad trait right there. And, I gotta, and part of that scared me away from it. I'll talk more about stuff like that in, in just a moment. But uh, let's think about that. I've, a boy will turn out like his mom or, or her dad. Or a woman will turn out like her, 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 uh, her mother or worse as a general rule unless God. If you, you, got, a, you got a girlfriend in here? You guys got a girlfriend? She so looks pretty good when she's uh, young and everything. But look, you want to see what she'll look like in a few years? Look at her mom. And I hate to tell you this, she ain't going to just look like her. She's going to act like her. The smart mouth, the temper, the whole bag. You get it all. Girls, you see that boy you like today? He's going to look just like his daddy in a few years. Sooner than you want to think. Say man, old people. All right. Is this in the Bible? Let's see if it's in the Bible. You don't have to turn to this. Daniel chapter number 5. There's a story of a king by the name of Belshazzar. 
And this old king here, he, he was walking out there one day, and he prospered, and he had everything a man wanted, and he run the whole show, and old Belshazzar was a king. He had everybody at his bidding. He could do anything he wanted to. He could snap his fingers and have you killed. He run the whole show, and brother, he got wicked, and he, and he had a big party, and, and boy, they lived it up, and they danced and praised the gods of gold and silver, silver and lived it up and got drunk and partied and partied and God sent the handwriting on the wall and God, uh, you know, God, you know what God told him? He said, you know why you're getting in trouble, Nebuchadnezzar, or Belshazzar? He said, your daddy, your father, Nebuchadnezzar, and in the Bible sometimes when he'd say your father, he's talking about you, your, it could be your grandfather. Well, I said the son of David was Jesus, way on down, generations to go. And, and he said, your father, Nebuchadnezzar, had everything a man could want. He run the whole kingdom. He did everything, and he refused to give God glory. And he said, you know what? That angel came down and went smack, and he lost his mind, went crazy, and he lived out there seven years and growed his fingernails. I mean, he became, uh, uh, he became Marilyn Manson out in the field uh, for seven years. And his hair grew like eagle's feathers. And he went crazy and lost his mind. And you know what God told Belshazzar? Are you listening, people? He said, you know what God told Belshazzar? He said, you've done the same thing your daddy did. Your daddy wouldn't give me the glory. Your daddy wouldn't do right. And I'll be if you ain't done the same thing, though thou knewest all this. He said, Belshazzar, you know what I happened to your daddy and you're going down the same road your daddy's going down. You ought to, uh, listen, this is parentheses. Always respect your parents. Always respect your mom and your dad. But you don't have to follow them down the wrong road. I'm not saying being disrespectful to them. I'm just saying learn your daddy's strengths and follow them. And learn your daddy's weaknesses and fight them. That's what I'm saying. I'm old now and I've figured it out. And I'm telling you, the Lord, listen, hey, God will do something with you. Just like them movie stars. Just them movie stars, they say they live like the devil. Their kid gets up. He's 16 years old. He's riding around Hollywood driving a Porsche. I mean, he's got money in the bank. He, he gets two or three girls pregnant. He gets on drugs. Gets, same exact thing his daddy did. How many people do you know where you say, yeah, I know that family. All they've ever done is drink, and all their daddies did was drink, and all their daddies did was drink. We all know people like that. That's not a generational curse. That is kids following the bad part of their parents. That's what that is. Now, i tell you what the Lord said one time. He told them people, he said, your father's a devil, and the lust of your father You'll do. But that puts you in a mess, don't it? Well, if your daddy's a devil, you better learn how to resist him bad traits. That's why a person says, well, I was born gay, so it's all right. Listen, people that are murderers were born with murder in their heart. People that are, they are if you are born that way, it's still wrong. Say amen, folks. I'm telling you this morning, that Belshazzar, God said, Belshazzar, your daddy wouldn't give me the glory. Now you won't give me the glory. It's so much like people today. If a daddy don't go to church, you watch a boy keep the church habits of his daddy. If a daddy don't go to church but once Easter and Christmas, the boy goes to church Easter and Christmas. If a daddy don't go regular, the boy don't go regular. You have to fight that bad traits from your daddy and feed the good parts. My daddy worked. I get my work ethic from my dad. They no doubt about it. Of course, my mom did too. But they, they, he, had, he had a drive inside him that don't even quit when it don't even make sense to keep going. And I get to, uh, my dad was a survivor. They had to survive in West Virginia. His mom died when he was little, like nine, ten kids. His sisters raised him. He, my daddy said he had been outside of people's house at night wishing they'd invite him in to come in and eat. They beat him with ice and beat, locked him up in a chicken coop when he was little. And uh, so because that, my dad's family had to survive. 
And I got that in me. I, I got it in me. I, I'm, a, I'm a survivor. We'll scrounge around and do. If this tires up, we'll do this. If that does that, we'll do that. If something goes wrong, you know, that's a good trait. And if you've got that from your parents, use that. The other day, I was looking for a, I was, I was uh, going down here to visit Brother Fred down there at the rest home, down there at 116. And then I've been thinking about this sweetheart band. And I've been down there a couple of times and everything. And, and I went in there to talk to them and I thought, well, this don't work. It's so crowded back there. We've got a lot of people want to come. This year, the ladies don't have to fix no dessert, don't have to bring no drinks or nothing. It's $11, tax included, all-you-can-eat buffet. Woo, this is a great idea. And, anyway, and then I got in the car and I thought, who has a sweetheart banquet at a place called Granny's? <laughs> <laughs> and then I went over and visited him. Honest to goodness, here's Daddy coming out. I went in there and I looked. You know, they build them rest homes nice now, buddy. They had this big old nice lunchroom in there and, and everything. I said, there's where we're having a sweetheart banquet. And I said, mate, you know you're getting old when you have your sweetheart banquet in a rest home. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's catching up with me. But that's, that's why anyway, if this didn't work, you try this. If this don't work, you try that. You, there's always a way. There's always a way out. There's always a way to make it. If that don't work, fix Now, that's good. Daddy's family had other stuff that I can't even talk about. We have to fight. Amen? I'm opening my life up to you a little bit this morning to help you see that's why sometimes you want to live like a devil and sometimes you want to do right. You get your sense of humor. You get that smart mouth and temper. Part of it from your parents. Let's look at another story here. In Matthew 14, there's a story of a messed up family, to say the least. For time's sake, let me just tell you this story. King Herod. Here's King Herod. King, Roman king, run the whole world, absolute dictator. That's the way. Now his brother... He had a brother named Philip. Philip married this girl named Herodias. Now, you know the story like this. John the Baptist came in one day and preached, and he preached and rebuked Herod for marrying his brother Philip's wife. That's where the, the narrative picks up there in the Bible and, and on that part right there. We don't go back into Philip and Herodias' wedding and back when they got married and it was all fine and wonderful. Herod was probably maybe right there his best man as Philip and Herodias got married and, and Herod was there signing the guest book. He was rich. He probably gave it. Mama cried. Sister cried. Everything. I mean, they, they all got married and... and uh, uh, you know, the story winds up where they're having this big party and dance and, and this, this girl, Herod, Herodias, had a little daughter and they, they call her Salome. That's not in the Bible. That's what history books say her name was. And Salome came in. She's about 14, 15, or 16 and done a wicked, evil dance and, and the king told her he could have whatever she wanted. You know the story. I hope you know the story. Well, John the Baptist was in jail for preaching against him Marrying his brother's wife. And you know the story. Got his head cut off on account of that. Now, this is a messed up family, let me tell you. That's a messed up family. Here's Herod and Philip, both married to the same woman. He didn't say, the Holy Ghost said, didn't say, John didn't come in and say, I'm going to rebuke you, you married your brother's ex-wife. Did he? He said, you married your brother's wife. She's married to both of them. There's your case in the Bible of a woman with two living husbands. But that's more doctrine than most Baptist preachers can swallow, so I just won't get into all of that this morning. But I'm preaching exactly what it says. She was married to both of them. That's polygamy. That's a messed up family. So when she moves in with Herod, 
Oh, God, she thinks, I'm going to be rich now, and I'm going to be famous. My husband's the king. Woo! I'll probably get on TV. Everybody's going to know me. I'm going to get me a new nosebook page, and I'm going to put pictures of me and Herod smiling, and pictures of me like this, and pictures of me like this, and then I'm going to take a, a double big magic marker and draw big eyebrows that thick, like that, and then I'm going to put on tons of makeup, and I'm going to go, yeah, and think I look good. She was crazy. She, oh, I, she, her little daughter was just like her. Why'd that girl come into a wicked dance? Where'd she learn that? Where'd she learn how to do a wicked dance that stirred up lust in her stepdaddy? You want to mess up family? Hey, darling. We're all about half drunk. You know. I got the Baptist preacher, the Baptist preacher in jail. He said, well, why didn't you get that Presbyterian preacher? Because he didn't say nothing about what we're doing. The Baptist did. They're so judgmental. Narrow-minded. So one day, mom gets a phone call. This just... Reading between the lines, mom gets a phone call, and it's the sister who says, Mom, have you heard? Mom said, No, what? Well, Herodias just left Philip. He she did. I knew she wasn't no count. I told him not to marry her. Well, she left him. She left him for another man. Well, I hope she's happy. Who is it? It's Herod. Mom said, What? He's my son. He's my son. And she left him for him. I didn't know there's divorce. Mom, they ain't. Well, how can she marry him? Well, it, it's, law, it's law here. He can do whatever he wants to. He's a king. Don't you think that might have thrown a damper on Herod and Philip's relationship? Boy, when it got Christmas... And they all go to mama's house. Here's Philip who's still married to her. Now some of you sitting there say, Lord, that sounds like just like them people I work with. <laughs> oh yeah, that old sin ain't new. Here in our family reunion, Philip is still married to Herodias. She's sitting there with Herod holding on to him because he's going to have all the money she's going to get one of these days. And mama says, Philip, don't say nothing, don't say nothing because we're going to get some of that money. If you cause a big trouble, they'll cut us out of the wheel. Just junk like that. Boy, some of y'all are so nervous, you're just, your heart's starting to flutter right now. I, I'm, listen, that's a messed up family, people. That is a messed up family. Or they'd have been on a Dr. Phil shores of the world if they'd have been here now. So you just be nice now. And that, you ought to thank God he got her away from you, Philly, Phil. And Herod says, Merry Christmas. That was her Christmas dinner. She is married to both of them. You say, I don't believe that. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. This is for people that believe the Bible. He married his brother Philip's wife. Well, as time went on, they had that big party and got drunk. Mama had everything she could want. She had a brand new car. They had everything, lived in a brand new mansion, had everything in the world, so she got drunk. Uh, they all got drunk, and then that little girl comes in and dances. Where'd she learn that? If she'd have been in the Bible-believing church all her life, she wouldn't even know how to do that. But that little girl knew how to move her hips and legs and twist around to get that man's attention. Just like cheerleaders and, and stuff like that are today. They're trained to get male attention from the time they're that high. I mean, her eyes was painted up. Lord have mercy. You ought to have seen her on Instagram. I mean, it was like, pfft. I mean, scary looking. Looked like it was going trick-or-treating. And, and uh, she put pictures of herself on there. By the way, don't you ever put a picture on the Internet of yourself that you would judge another girl for putting on if it was her. You say, I can't believe she, Well, I can't believe you. Lord, oh, there's so much preaching in here. Y'all need everything you're, I'm, you're giving you this morning. 
Well, so here she comes in, and she says, uh, he said, he said, look, come here, honey. Come here, come here. Man, that's a messed up scene when a stepdaddy's less than that's a stepdaughter, and they're all drunk, and he's going to give her everything she wants to the half of the kingdom. He said, what do you want, honey? Anything you want. Baby, is yours. And her wicked, filthy mama sitting right there watching that. Yeah. So what does she do? She don't say, well, I need to pray about this and make a decision to keep my life pure and right and quit. And I shouldn't let put other things. Nope, 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 nope. She ain't learned that way. She ain't been taught like that. She came over and said, Mama, what, is, what should I ask? I can have anything I want. Oh, you got a new camel? I got a new, I have an Instagram. I have an iPhone 50. I have, I have everything is coming. I have, all, I have iPad, 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 we pad. I, I, I know. Oh, I can do it all. I sell on the internet twenty four hours a day. I don't have to work the rest of my life. What I want. And her mom said, "Just get him." We're not happy just living wicked. Shut that preacher's mouth up. God have mercy on a preacher that the world don't hate. He ain't much of a preacher. She said, "Go get his head." Cut his head off. He says, okay. Catch me outside. How about that? And, and, she, and so she runs out and says, Herod. Hi, Daddy. Ta, little tramp. I'm t- I, listen, brother. Little girls shouldn't be trained to act like prostitutes to get faith. They talk about all these men. All these men in Congress and everything made sexual remarks to women. So that's wrong and they shouldn't do it. But what about a woman going in there flashing herself to get favors and appointments and a raise? Same thing, just as bad. Come on, preacher. Let it rip this one. Hey, hey, you ain't no hurry, are you? We might just stay here a few minutes and get this done. Fair is fair, amen. So she come out. She said I had a chat room. She had insta advertised myself. I've, been, I've seen this same thing. I've been visiting. I've been visiting before, and I'm around. We go to trailer parks. We go, here's Mama. Hey, y'all go to church anywhere? Yeah, have a seat, preacher. Her shorts is up to here. She still wears the same shorts she tried to get into about 20 years ago. <laughs> she looks like an elephant with a diaper on. I'm, I'm, it's pitiful. And she's hanging out everywhere. Preacher, honey, shut that TV off. Her hair is three different colors. And she sits in there and says, Teddy, go get that dog in and bring it in here. Bring it, bring things been out there all night. And what do you want, preacher? I'm sitting there thinking, Lord, have mercy if that was my mom. Oh, Lord. Yeah. About that time, some little old something walks in there. Mommy, I'm going to, and all that is, is a younger version of that. Looks like her, acts like her, dresses like her. Her most mannerisms are like her. She's already got a boyfriend. Already been around the block two or three times. That's Herodias and Herod. So she does the dance. So there's a lot in that book, ain't there? When you start looking. Now, let me say quickly, mom should have never let her dance. She shouldn't have learned how to dance wicked at all. She had everything, and she asked the wrong person for advice, her mama. Not her pastor, not her Sunday school teacher. Have you ever noticed when you want to do something bad, you'll ask somebody's advice that you know ain't going to tell you the right thing? Now, Wesley Grant said she got her head cut off skating after that. I skate. I don't know if that's true or not. That's what Ruckman said. That's what he said. Where that come from, I don't know. Ruckman said that was in some history book. I heard him say that. My faith, no doubt in my mind, comes from my mom. Ain't no doubt in my mind. My faith that I've got now, the the base of my faith, I got it from my mother. And I also got a keen sense of guilt from my mother. You can ask my girls, ask Kelly. I feel guilty just about all the time. My mom was like that. We couldn't even enjoy nothing. Have you, have you ever felt like you feel guilty enjoying anything? Because you think all the people in the world ain't got nothing on. And I've heard her say that, and I'm the same way. I'm the same way. I have a hard time relaxing and just enjoying something because I feel guilty all the time. Now, that can be good and can be bad. 
I have to fight. Let me tell you what a bad, bad part of my mom's family's from. My mom's family hold a grudge. If you ever hurt one, go across. They're very, they hold a grudge forever. Some of y'all know some of my family. I mean, if you ever, if you ever get mad at you, they're mad at you forever. We won't name no names, but there's plenty of them. My mom, you know what my mom said, and they're her family. She said, "Them beans are funny people," <laughs> and she was one. Now I got my faith from her, but I remember a long time ago somebody hurt me, and I, for a long time I and I thought this ain't right. This ain't right. Daddy's family, they'd, they'd all get drunk and knock each other's brains out, and the next day hug each other's neck and go start a garden or something. So <laughs> I'd say, I've got to fight this. I've got to fight this. I can't let this be a part of my life. You'll just think, well, I can't help it. Mama's like that, and I'm like, yes, you can help it. You can fight the bad stuff and feed the good stuff. You can do it. We had, our, our heat's been out, still ain't fixed. Went through that bad week last week. We had fireplace, run out of gas. Freezing to death, three, three, four kids downstairs. And we had run electric heaters and stuff. And I was figuring around like that, and I said, I'll go get the gas tank off the grill. That's my daddy. And I'll hook it up to that gas tank. And Kelly said, no, you'll blow us to pieces. She said, you're going to blow the house up. And I said, that's that. That's the way you think. If something don't work, figure out some other way to make something work. But you can get your head blowed off doing that. <laughs> and I have a time or two. But my, my mom would say, no, son, call the truck and have it filled up and do it the right way. Daddy'd say, figure out a way around it. You have to fight. You have to fight. Here's what I want you to do this morning. And I'm through. I found myself out there that day and it's snowed. I was shoveling snow. Shoveling snow. And something said, you know you're wasting your time. You know what the, you know what the rednecks say? You're wasting your time shoveling snow. It'll melt. But I, you know what daddy do? He put a big gallon, big 55 gallon truck uh, in the back of his old truck. He never had a four wheel drive. And let the air have his back tire. You might remember him see him doing that, Mac. His truck be sitting like that. And he'd go, he'd go real slow and just go, go in the snow. Just, just rigging stuff. And uh, I remember thinking that the other day. But you can't say, I'll smack one of my kids. That's what daddy did, so that's what I'll do. Bam! No, you have to fight that bad part you got from your daddy. If your dad won't stay faithful or work a job or be, be good to his family, you're going to have them tendencies. And you have to say, Lord, help me not to do that. I love my daddy. I get my good parts from him and not go where he went off. I stay straight. If your mama's a smart aleck and bites everybody's head off and expects the whole world to bow down when she walks in, you're going to have to fight that, girls. As far as I know right now, Salome and Herodias are in hell right now, as far as we know. If they didn't get saved, they're in hell, and that little girl's screaming, Mama, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. And they're there forever and ever and ever. She followed her mom to hell, unless they got saved. Belshazzar and Nebuchadnezzar are in hell. Here's what you got to do. Now, my daddy drank heavy, or my daddy did, and I'm not going to do it. I am not going to do it. I love him. I respect him. But I'm not going to follow him where he gets off track. I'm going to follow him where he's right. Like John, Zacchaeus. Is your mom real motherly, and she wants to take care of the whole world? That's good. Take that. Take that. I witnessed to a man up here in, in uh, Nebo one time. Very well-to-do man. Very well-to-do man. Own land, rich people. And I felt burdened to go witness to him. And I sat down and talked to him. And I said, man, have you ever been saved? And here's what he said. He said, my daddy always said, if you treat your neighbor right, do people right, you'll be all right. I said, yeah, but the Bible says, 
you must be born again. The Bible says you want And then here he went again. Daddy always said, if I'll be good, do people right, that I'll be all right. And it was so ingrained in that man's head, the way his daddy taught him, he couldn't even hear what I was saying. He couldn't even get it. It just like, I was like saying, I was like talking that, that chair. That's what's the problem you got, some of y'all this morning. You have tendencies in you that if you feed them, they're going to ruin you. And you got others in you that if you feed them, they'll help you. And some, if you don't fight them, they're going to be your downfall. It's up to you what you do about it. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Fight it or feed it. Every head bowed and every eye closed, we're going to sing a little bit. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. It's still early in the year. Here in third Sunday in January, it's still early. It'd be a good time to just get out of your seat, come down here, and rededicate your life to God. Husbands and wives, how about husbands and wives? How about mamas and daddies? How about bus workers, Sunday school teachers? How about, listen, you'll follow them tendencies if you ain't careful. Try it. May God help us this morning. Son's coming. Let's get out of your seat. Come on, right now. Come on. Get us, young lady, young man, mom or dad. Father, help us this morning. Hear God do something this morning in our hearts. Help us, Lord, to realize that, that no good thing dwells in our flesh. Help us to realize that we're all sinners. And Lord, we're all, Lord, Lord, we're no good. We're not fit to shoot. Dear God, help us, Lord. Help us, Father. Please help us, Lord, we pray. Have mercy on us. Help us, Lord, to feed the faith, to starve our doubts, to do the right thing, to serve you, to go on and make a mark for you in this generation and get the job done you've given us to do. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray for his sake. Amen. Let's sing this morning. You need to come. You come on. Join these right now. Amen. Come on, man. All to Jesus I surrender. Hey, man, surrender all. all to Him I freely give. Hey. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily. Live. Hey. I surrender all. Hey, man. I surrender. Take it this morning. Jesus, take Surrender me all. Now. Surrender all.